What's going on everybody? It's John Davis with Lachlan Highlands Farm coming at you to talk about this thing that's over my shoulder. I, we do a little bit of engineering here on the farm. I think that's a core part of being a farmer. Um, I call it farmer engineering or farmineering. I, you know, whatever, I'm a nerd, so it's, it's fun for me to make up words. But I have found in the short time that we've been ranching, farming, whatever you want to call it, combination of both, uh, struggling, <laughs> it's another word for that, that farmers are some of the most uh, inventive and creative engineers that I know. You got to work with what you have. Oftentimes the situations are challenging, the applications are challenging, and you have to build something that not only withstands the pressure of mother nature and heavy use, but uh, also animals too. Animal pressure is definitely a thing. And when your animals are a thousand pounds and overly friendly, you got to build stuff pretty stout or else it just winds up coming apart. So this contraption that I built, is my own home-built uh, solar charger, or I should say solar system that runs my fence charger. So that electrifies our fence here on the farm, or at least the section of the fence on our farm. And I built it for a very specific reason, and there was not one off the shelf that did what I wanted it to do. So I put this together, use my limited knowledge of solar, and use it as a project to kind of learn about how to uh, do these type of projects and learn a little, little bit more about solar because we're starting to use more and more of that on the farm. It's a pretty useful tool. So let me show you what I got here. I'll try to run through this systematically and give you an idea of what we do and then uh, we'll go from there. So here is the charger or the system, I should say, as it fits. Now, this particular solar setup, this runs, oh, uh, roughly half of our ranch. And we don't have the biggest ranch on planet Earth, but there's a lot of fence that is running off of this charger. So on our, our fence structure, at least some of our fence is this stuff, which is called woven wire. So uh, we put this in some of our paddocks. It's really great for sheep and especially for lambs because it's uh, kind of woven wire all the way down to the ground there. And then we run a hot wire on top of it so we can hook onto the top wire with our uh, intermediate paddocks, and then we have electric power near where we want. Um, you can kind of see in the middle of the pasture there, we've got a divider fence. So that's a five wire divider fence using timeless fence posts that splits our pasture in half, or at least this pasture in half. And we have one in our far pasture back there too. So we can run uh, rotational grazing paddocks on either side of that fence. And it just makes for a better use of space and makes it easier to put up rotational paddocks and whatnot. So. Uh, you know this is a rotational grazing farm, by the way, because as you look at our pastures, you'll notice that you see some cows down there, and it looks like we have no animals. And the reason for that is that we are constantly moving our animals around the farm. And I have a whole gaggle of sheep that just came off this section of the farm that have rotated to another section of the farm where there's new grass for them to graze on. Uh, and this we let set. I trim this pasture, I clip this pasture. We're going to let this set for 30 days or more to let it regenerate let the parasite load that's in the soil and in the manure die down, and then we'll bring the animals back through here and, and start it all over. So a properly managed grass farm, or regenerative agriculture farm, or grazing system, I should say, should uh, look like parts of it have never had animals on it. Um, that means I'm doing my job right. So it's just a, a little tidbit there on rotational grazing. But anyway, so we've got these hot wires running around all the perimeter. We've got divider fences running all over the place, and then that far pasture over there, and then the rest of the farm we have in five wire electric fence. So if you add that all up, we've got a lot of fence that's running off of this charger. So this is the whole system right here. And from an overall architecture standpoint, we've got the solar panel up there, we've got the control box right there, I've got batteries down there, and I've got the fence charger right there. So we'll start at the fence charger and kind of move our way over. The fence charger that we run, or the fence charger brand that we run on the ranch is Speedrite. Now, there's a whole bunch of them out there. Everybody's got their opinion. I like Speedrite chargers. I like them because they're well-made. I like them because they are just great. They work very well. And they can also run off of battery power or run off of AC mains. Now, this one runs off of battery power. We have one other one that runs off of AC mains. And eventually, in a perfect world, all of our chargers would run off of AC mains. But it, you got to trench those lines in and he, we'll get there. It's a lot of time and money to trench in electric lines. So, and it, also sometimes too, you just need a charger. And when you need a charger with a lot of capacity in it, you uh, can stick one of these things up and you're off to the races, right? So that's a Speedrite 12,000. I would like it to be a Speedrite 18,000 because I like hot fences. I don't want animals to think twice about hitting a fence. When it hits it or hits them, um, I want to smell cooking meat. No, I'm joking. I, when it hits them, I want them to be like, yeah, I'm never going to touch that thing again. I'm terrified of it. It's horrible. 
So uh, with the amount of fence we have and the vegetation load, uh, vegetation load would be when the grass grows up into the fence during the spring rush or the spring green up rather. With all that vegetation load, I want to make sure that we've got plenty of uh, capacity. So I think the 12,000 is like a, I don't know, 14 joule charger or something like that. The 18,000, or maybe it's a 12 or a 12 joule charger. I think the 18,000 is like a 16 or 18 joule charger. So tend to make them pretty big. Anywho, so that's the charger. Now, I definitely know that there are companies out there that make fully integrated fence chargers that would have negated the need for me to do this entire system. Uh, Gallagher, for example, they make a fine solar charger. Uh, Premier One makes some fine solar chargers. The problem with those, though, are that they are made for smaller paddocks. And with our Speedrite charger, this is a big charger. If I put, or if I want to get the type of capacity, the amount of power out of one of those other chargers, I, you just can't do it in the size that they have. I don't, I don't think any, any of them have an 18 joule or a 20 joule charger. And they're definitely not going to power acres and acres and acres and acres and miles and miles and miles of fence. It's just not going to work. So I had to construct this system because I have a bigger charger and bigger power needs and bigger batteries. So that's the charger. The solar panel is a Renogy 100 watt solar panel. And I'll be the first to admit, I kind of cobbled this thing together. I did not do a huge amount of engineering because I wanted to get the parts, put it together and just see how it ran and do some anecdotal engineering, let's say or some uh, swag engineering and see how that worked out. So I picked a 100 watt panel. Also, Renogy has this really nice mount. Um, I wish it had a little bit more tilting capacity in it, but eh, you know, it is what it is. So I got that from Renogy. I mounted this to a pole. I believe this pole is two and three eighths. That's the type of pole you would use on a chain link fence. And this pole is mounted to my fence post, my corner post. And these brackets right here, you can get at Home Depot and uh, they're meant for mounting a chain link fence post to a like a backyard fence in the suburbs. So I put three of those on. This thing is not going anywhere. I think that's an eight foot pole and it's got plenty of holding power to hold that thing there. So that's my solar panel that goes up there. I've got my control box here and then I've got my batteries down here. Now I'll talk about the control box in a minute, but with the batteries, you notice I have an extension cord on here. This is because in the winter months, or if we get a lot of cloud cover, I have to run a trickle, tr trickle charger on these batteries. And yeah, yeah, I know, that's a bit of an oversight in terms of the engineering side of things. But like I said, I was doing a little bit of swag, seat of the pants engineering here, and I wanted to see how it worked. So uh, at some point, I'm gonna need to add more battery capacity and or add a larger solar panel so that we charge faster. But, you know, this works really well. I would say, oh, eight or nine months out of the year, I don't ever have to plug in the trickle charger. So I consider that a win. It's really not that big of a deal. As far as the batteries, I've got two 100 amp hour batteries in parallel. Uh, I've got my little trickle charger here. As far as the battery terminals, I got those from O'Reilly Auto Parts. So they have a screw terminal as well as a traditional battery terminal so that I have a place to gang my batteries together. Uh, I got these battery interlink cables from O'Reilly Auto Parts. They were not expensive and it all works out well. So uh, when your batteries are in parallel, it means now I just have um, 200 amp hours of capacity and uh, that's good. So, you know, big batteries are awesome. Go for big batteries. From a solar standpoint, one of the things I learned is to make sure that you get actual deep cycle marine batteries. I learned that there are deep cycle marine batteries and then there are hybrid deep cycle marine batteries. And the hybrid ones, they do not work like marine deep cycle batteries. And they just don't like the, the um, deep charge cycles that these things are made to withstand. And they will not stand up in a, uh, in a solar environment where you're bringing these things down pretty low sometimes. So get marine deep cycle batteries, buy once, cry once, and you're good to go. I need to add another bank of batteries to this and make that happen. But like I said, there's other things happening on the farm. Right now this works out just fine. And when things get bad, I plug in my trickle charger and you're good to go. So that's my battery setup. Just got my interconnect cables. Um, you'll notice that my trickle charger is I've got, so I've got two batteries. I've got my trickle charger positive on the positive terminal of one battery. And on the negative terminal of the other battery, I've got my trickle, the other trickle charger lead there. When you've got batteries in parallel, you want to connect the trickle charger across both batteries so that you get equal charging. If you don't, you run into issues with um, the batteries being charged unequally, then you lose capacity, and it's just a nightmare. So we don't wanna do that. So that's the batteries. It's just a Home Depot Commander tote on the farm here. Uh, these totes, man, I'll tell you what, these get used for a lot of things. They are fantastic. All right, so up to the box. 
this enclosure is <clears throat> a uh, excuse me a uh, box made by a company called Atabox A T T A B O X, and Atabox makes a fantastic polycarbonate enclosure that is UV rated. So these things, I found these guys. They're an industrial company that makes an industrial grade box. They're very well priced and they're just awesome. So I would recommend because farming is kind of an interesting intersection between industrial and commercial. Don't cheap out in the box. You got some equipment in here that costs some money. Just make sure to, um, you know, spend the money where you need to spend it so that you don't have to do things twice. Because one of my favorite sayings is there's always time to do things two times, but there's never time to do it right the first time, right? All right. So inside of here, this is the Renogy charge controller which again, I'm pretty darn happy with. And if you're in the industrial world, you'll definitely recognize this stuff here. If you're not, uh, I bought this, uh, these components here from a company called Automation Direct. And Automation Direct sells very, oh, I would say very nice. They're like the Harbor Freight of the industrial world. Let me put it that way. So they sell very, uh, pretty decent quality, um, very, uh, uh, well, yeah, I'd say very affordable industrial components, especially on the electrical side. So, this part, this part here, that's called DIN rail. These here are called terminal blocks. So that just gives you a place to land your wires. And then I've got three circuit breakers here that control my different power points. So as you can see from my very professional wire or very professional labeling here, uh, the first uh, circuit breakers for the solar panel. Um, the second circuit breaker is the charge controller to the battery. And the third circuit breaker is the load power. So the idea is I can isolate the solar panel because remember, if there's light on the solar panel, whether it's from a flashlight or the sun, those things are producing energy. So you need to be able to isolate those for safety. Um, sometimes I may want to turn off my charge controller to the battery if I need to do work on the battery and I want to be safe there. And then sometimes I want to leave the battery charging, but I want to turn off the fence completely so I can uh, flick the circuit breaker off for the fence and uh, turn off our load power, which in this case is the fence. One of the important things not to overlook are these. These are cable entry glands. These are stainless steel ones that, I, again, I got from Automation Direct. These are nice because they keep bugs out of your enclosure. So they kind of wrap around the cable, allow the cable to pass through, but they don't allow bugs to pass through. And the last thing you want is to open this thing up and have a bunch of yellow jackets or uh, whatever other evil, god-awful creatures live inside of these things. So. Anyway, um, I've got my positive terminal strip for my battery here, negative terminal strip for my battery here, and then I connect up my fence charger to it, and if I ever decide to connect anything else, I could certainly connect it to the spots and we're good to go. So that's that. Atabox makes a nice enclosure. I would definitely check them out. It's good stuff. Close that back up. Put my lid back on battery box. Put my extension cable back on top and call it good. So that's about it. All said and done, oh man, I probably spent, you know, maybe 1500 bucks somewhere in there, which is some money, but it's a lot less than trenching in an electric line and a lot less than buying a similarly sized fence controller off the market. So I think it works out pretty well. One of the things that I want to emphasize is that you just need to get out and try stuff sometimes. Their uh, farming, ranching, all of it is such a great opportunity, especially if you have an engineering mindset or you're just a curious person, to go out and try stuff. Uh, like with this, there's, it's a well-built system, it runs very well, but I don't have enough battery capacity. So I guess you could consider it a win in that I've got a really cool system that I built. I learned a lot about solar, I was doing it, but there's a fail in there, it doesn't have enough battery capacity. It doesn't make the whole system a failure, it's still better than running extension cords, and it's still better than swapping out batteries every day. So. It works out pretty well, and I, I encourage everybody to have that mindset and just give it a shot and see what happens. So, it's a it's a fun thing on the farm. You got to have fun doing this stuff, or else you drive yourself crazy. And you got to have that continuous knowledge mindset because that is what we're here for: is to learn and try to figure out how to make this all better. So, anyway, just wanted to give a quick rundown of that. I thought that was a pretty nifty system that I put together. I'm really happy with the components that I chose. And I think it worked out great. If you have something similar on your farm, comment and let me know. If you have any questions about the build, comment and let me know. And if you like what you see here, uh, like and subscribe and do all that good stuff so that uh, we can continue to grow the channel and continue to do what we love to do. So God bless you all. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon.